Yeah, it's good. Okay, it's now, now you look like you're at home, Dad. Yeah, you know, this is a very comfortable posture for me. We're here at the Paradise City at Sun and Fun 2012. We're going to be talking with Cameron Blevins today. He is the man behind North Wing. North Wing implies the wing, and that's true. He does an awful lot of production of wings for trikes. He also makes wings for hang glider pilots, which in that case is just the wing. But he also makes the carriage that we're sitting in, often just called a trike, or in the official ASTM words, weight shift control aircraft. And uh, welcome, Cameron Blevins, to uh, Sun and Fun 2012. Good to be here. Looks like you got another nice rig. Tell us what I'm sitting in here and, and what, how this is a factor in your overall line of trikes because you have several trikes, and we're going to look at all of them, That's but right. right now we're looking at the... Light Sport aircraft, white, Light Sport weight shift aircraft, and uh, this is the Scout XC 912 model. Okay. It has a lot of new features on it this year. It has an electrical adjustable front seat for different leg lengths. Oh, really? Okay. And, electrical power. Uh, we have the engineer aluminum leaf spring suspension designed by Grove Aircraft. All right. And we, we have the uh, airfoil mast, which was picked up about three miles an hour on the trike. Is it really? And oh, because it's spared, you're saying? Yep, yeah. Yep. It used to be round. And this is steel, I can see, is it? Or it's is chrome it? molly steel. Uh, okay, chrome molly, so it's welded. This uh, yep. That structure, that makes it very, very stout on this aircraft. The whole fuselage is made of chrome molly and, and aircraft aluminum. The outer fairing, you see, is a fiberglass. Um, and that's literally just a fairing. There's no structure to this at all. That's right. Yeah. Literally just a fairing. Uh, we have dual rear brake. Matco brakes, aircraft brakes. Operated so, how? Uh, left foot brake. Left foot brake down here. So what you can't see, I've got my feet on the rudder pedals. And uh, at the top of the rudder pedals, there's a little uh, bar on each one. Much like you'd have on tow brakes on a fixed wing aircraft, except that the one on this side is the brake. The one on the other side is a foot throttle. Because you've got your hands busy when you're taking off. Therefore, you can't have a hand on a throttle because you might need both hands on the control bar. This is the equivalent of a yoke or a stick in a fixed wing airplane. So we'll back a little bit, but they're not rudder pedals. We don't have a rudder. <laughs> There's no rudder pedal. Yeah, right. I'm, uh... This is just a steering of the front board. That's right. So as to the steering, you can see what I'm doing here. And it's classic. It's what's sometimes called wrong way steering. You push left to go right. That seems a little tough to get used to, but first of all, you don't have to do it very much. You can almost hold your feet fixed in position, and you can take off uh, as long as you're good into the wind and so forth. Mainly, you'll use the steering, uh, what I call the rudder pedals, uh, by uh, for maneuvering on the ground. That's right. And what are those two bars that you've got just off to your side there, Dan? These back here? These are instructor bars. So as I turn the nose wheel, you might be able to see this bar down here moving too. Now, this is the same thing. The uh, steering of the uh, of the aircraft, but from an instructor who sits in the back. Well, an instructor sitting in the back can't reach this bar very easily. That's what these are for, for him to be able to help a student who's maybe not doing it quite right to say, no, a little more out, a little more back, whatever the situation calls for. That's what these are for. And they are easily removed. There's a Velcro here. I won't take off all the way. And the part can pin off down here. So you can remove these if you don't aren't doing instruction, don't want that in the way. And how does the instructor work the throttle then? There's a foot throttle right here on the on the right foot. This is also a foot throttle. Overrides overrides the front throttle. Uh, uh, that one overrides. Okay, so that's good. So the instructor really does have control of it. But in addition, you've got a hand throttle on these as well. For cruise yeah. throttle, yes. And it's right down here between my legs. There are two uh, controls down here. One of them clearly labeled choke. It's just for the starting process. You won't use that very much. But the throttle here, this one does override. That's usually the situation. Yep. It does here too. So once you've taken off with the foot throttle and you're up at altitude or you're just at a comfortable place where you can uh, release your hand for a moment, you can just come down here. And now you're setting the throttle just like you do on a conventional aircraft. The foot throttle is a spring-loaded arrangement. You have to keep your foot on it to keep the power on it. If you take your foot off, the power goes back. But the hand throttle down here will operate in a fixed position, set it where you want it, go about flying. And how do you trim the airplane while you're flying? Good uh, question. That's, that's unique to this one. <clears throat> Typically in a trike in the past, you only had uh, the ability to push out and pull in. And when you pulled in for more speed, you're holding a lot of pressure or right, pushing kinda, out. You kind of hold it back like this. This one here, we have a, a fast and slow trim here, which actually moves the trike forward on the wing or ah, moves the, the trike backwards on the wing. So 
If you want to go fast, the bar is just going to automatically come back with no pulling in up to 75 or bring it out to 60. So it's, so it's about a 15 mile an hour speed range adjustment, which which is really going to relieve that quite a bit. If you bring that all the way back, that's going to help it go out a little easier. Yep. Push it all the way forward, forward for fast. That's, that's right. going to hold it back here some more. <clears throat> if I turn the key on and, take, and reach down the seat, I can bring you forward here. <laughs> I think that's the first, first time you've ever, had that, I've ever seen that had an <laughs> electrical, an adjustable seat at all is unusual, yeah. but certainly electrical. So, so that's the first in the industry as far as I know. So you're powering this with a 912 then, what kind of range do we have for speeds with this uh, airplane? Well, we, got, we carry 16 gallons of usable fuel. <clears throat> that's approximately four hours of flying. And at 70, 75 miles an hour, uh, that's 300 miles. 300 miles. And if you're in absolutely no wind. So uh, 75 is the max cruise? That's a comfortable cruise. Okay. You can That's cruise up to 85 if you want to. Up to 85, and uh, you've got a V&E setting, of course, all 90, aircraft do. That's 90, 90 miles an hour. So you're well short of that then. Yeah. Uh, now, shouldn't run into any problem. You see all these trikes flying, and there's a whole bunch of different north wing wings on them. Is this capable of taking an additional wing to make it either go slower or more fast? <clears throat> yeah, we make all different wings. We have three different exposed crossbar wings which uh, range from putting on float trikes and get off the water quick to a 15 meter that's really nice for the instructor to train in the, the 40 to 45 mile an hour speed range is really nice for training and then the uh, 13.5 which is uh, you know, moderately, moderately fast between 60 and 75 for your average trim speed and then the 12.5 which uh, would trim between 70 and 85. Now these um, numbers that you're mentioning, they're, uh, they're metric numbers and you're referring to the square area of the wing. <clears throat> yes, the, the, yes, the 13.5 is the square meters <clears throat> of the wing. It works out to be about uh, 148 square feet. So for it's this fairly, fairly consistent with a fixed wing aircraft of this size. Yeah. The amount of wing area, although it looks different, the swept wing and no <clears throat> tail and all that, but, uh, but basically the wing area doing about the same job that a fixed wing aircraft does. Right. We've really uh, positioned ourselves to supply wings to other manufacturers in the industry. We, uh, we probably provide 80% of the wings to other ma trike manufacturers. Uh, we actually make a wing that, ha that holds a world re record speed course at 100 and 107, mile 107 miles an hour maintained <laughs> speed over a 17 mile course. That was done on a Revo trike. It's a 11 meter wing. 11 meter, okay. So that's getting, you use a smaller wing, obviously you can go yeah. faster, but at those speeds, at at the slow speeds, we're going to look at your little uh, Solaris trike, which is a single place part 103 vehicle. That one's going to fly quite slow. On an aircraft like this, you've got a nice windscreen here that I'm guessing really deflects, creates an air bubble behind it. That's right. But still in all, you might want a full face helmet because at those kind of speeds, certainly at 107 miles an hour, yeah. you're going to get a lot of, you're going to want some protection for your face in that yeah. situation. You're very well protected here as a pilot. The passenger gets a little bit of wind. Yeah, so because this, face, this will only create a bubble about like that, I suppose. Yeah, the full face helmet in the back is really necessary on this wing. So let's talk about the guy in the back or the person in the back wearing a helmet. In previous trikes that I've had experience with, there's usually a single mast that goes up. That's fine construction-wise, but what it means is someone sitting back there who's right. wearing a helmet may touch that bar with his head, and you will feel quite the vibration from that. Whereas here, we got something different. Yep, got the, the dual mask which you set between, you feel secure in your shoulders, you don't have anything to bump your head on, and it's much more comfortable for the passenger and the instructor to boot. So uh, this has been a, one of our features that has, has made this trike very popular. Excellent. How is this trike available to the market then? Is it coming out as a kit that somebody has to build, or is it ready to fly? Well, I believe this one is an SLSA, right? This was an SLSA factory build. That means a special light sport aircraft, means fully manufactured by the factory, meets the ASTM standard certification that FAA accepts. That's right. So this is in every way a certified aircraft. Yep. It just looks a little different than what a lot of people think of as certified aircraft. That's right. But you, do you sell it any other way? Is it available in a kit form? or We don't sell it in kit but we do make it available in experimental. The same trike, just a matter of paperwork, it becomes an experimental. So the experimental amateur built then? No, experimental, experimental light, sport. light sport aircraft. Okay, that's the two categories you can have in the light sport segment, experimental and, and special. And that means that an owner can do some of the work and maybe save some money? Yes, yeah, so you can do your, your own maintenance. And, and, and then you can do maintenance if you, once you've got some credential for that, of course, too. So. Sure. 
So if we want to get some more information, Dan, where we're going to go? Well, let's uh, ask uh, Cameron about his website. What's your website? I've been to it. It's got a lot of great information. How do people get there, Cameron? It's pretty easy. Northwing.com. And, name uh, of the company. Name of the company. And there's a lot of information there. Have you ever flown any of these aircraft now? I've flown a lot of Cameron's wings over the years and uh, some of his aircraft. All that information is available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.